So uh, the topic of this talk is um, growing stents and growing children. It was uh, mentioned by Jacques uh, in, in a few minutes ago. And um, it is a very interesting topic, and uh, we have some experience using these uh, stents, and I want to take you with uh, on the journey and to, to ask together with you whether it, it, it may be a lifelong platform if it uh, once implanted in, in infancy or in small kids. And all of you are uh, aware of that uh, problem and the difficulty with standing in infants and small kids. Because uh, a stand, if it is uh, once implanted in an infancy or early childhood, should be expandable to adulthood size, which is uh, most often not the case. And uh, this may uh, sometimes uh, be the cause of a re stenosis during growth by the technical limitations of uh, re expansion of the stand, which has been implanted. And uh, therefore, the use of stands in this age group is still limited uh, in use. And many of these devices, which uh, uh, which we are uh, going to use in infancy are being adopted from the need in pediatric cardiology which are adopted from the PCI, so a small stents in the coronary interventions, uh, especially if you are dealing with uh, uh, impl stent implantation in uh, neonates or in infants. The redilatation therefore is limited, uh, as we heard by Shuck, and uh, there are uh, absolutely no randomized or controlled trials for the infant's age group. Uh, and uh, that means that most of the cases have been uh, bailout procedures, uh, and there have been only a few attempts to introduce new, new stent technologies, which also uh, comprising the uh, um, self uh, uh, um, bioabsorbable stents. But one fact is <clears throat> valid for almost all of the current approved stents it is a permanent implant and uh, cannot be. Uh, re, uh, replaced uh, with, with techniques other than surgical techniques. So there are some experience with biodegradable or bioabsorbable stents. There are the polymer stents, the polymer plants, or the metal stents, and both uh, the polymer and the metal stents have been used with very disappointing results in congenital heart disease, either having been the uh, magnesium stent or the uh, PLLA stent which have been used. And uh, there are specific limitations with the biodegradable stents uh, if you are going to use it in congenital heart disease because the radial strength is uh, much less than that what we have uh, with the uh, uh, metal stents, uh, whether it is uh, open or a closed cell design. We have with the biodegradable stents a very early recoil and they are going to produce an inflammation. Uh, even though they are going to be covered uh, with anti-inflammatory medication, which uh, cause uh, a significant uh, uh, blood level of those uh, anti-inflammatory medications in uh, neonates, uh, what we know from some attempts uh, of pulmonary vein stenosis. Um, there's um, a uh, series which has been uh, uh, published uh, by Dietmar Schranz and Gießen. This is uh, the magnesium stand implanted in a coarctation, a recoarctation of a surgical repair. And, uh, well, the initial uh, result was uh, nice, but there was a very uh, uh, short-term uh, recoil with a redilatation and uh, another um, um, uh, implantation of a, of a magnesium stand. But at the very end, after three months of the initial uh, re-standing, was a, the surgery again necessary. And um, there is uh, the remedy stand, which is a biodegradable stand, a PLLA a polymer. And this uh, needs a seven French introducer with uh, two gold uh, radio opaque markers, uh, comes in, in diameters of five to eight millimeters, can be expanded up to nine millimeters, and the stand length is six, uh, 36 millimeter. You can reduce the length by cutting off one stand, which uh, gives you uh, the disadvantage that you lose one of those radio opaque markers, which uh, makes visibility a bit uh, uh, less. So this is an example what is uh, given me by Sven Dietrich in Erlangen. He has an early re three months after extending arch repair. As you can see here, he implanted that uh, remedy stand. But also in this, uh, we, he experienced a very early significant recoil, even though the second stand has been implanted overlapping the first one. And that means he had to do a subsequent surgical redo also in this case. So the, 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 with other words speaking, the bioabsorbable stents are not really a solution in this current times. We probably we'll have some more experience with the new stent, the ELLA stent, what has been mentioned by, <coughs> excuse me, by um, Chuck. 
So if we <coughs> now entering the topic, uh, which means uh, cross adaptable stents, there are, we have uh, meanwhile three different uh, solutions. One is the cross stent, which has been invented by my colleague Peter Evert, and uh, firstly published in 2004 with a midterm at uh, 2008. And there are breakable stent, uh, the baby stent from Ozipka company, and uh, the new B cross stent from the Bentley Inomet company, uh, uh, recently presented by Frank Uhlemann in the uh, meeting of the German Association of Pediatric Cardiology in Weimar. Uh, this year, and uh, both of these stands uh, are uh, hopefully available in, in the recent time. This is the growth stand, and this is the baby stand, and on the right uh, panel there's uh, the B growth stand from the Innomate company. These are the animal experience with the uh, baby stand, uh, which is now under clinical evaluation, and uh, hopefully we will have some more information to, of this uh, stand, of the uh, mechanisms and the concept uh, within the next uh, two years using this uh, stand. So. Coming back to the growth stand, which uh, already has been implanted uh, since uh, nearly 12 year, 10 years now, uh, this is comprises of uh, two longitudinal halves with uh, smooth edges. Uh, it is e electro-polished uh, with regard to the surface and uh, bears omega joints. And these are tongue and groove elements which are being to be connected with a resorbable thread at each of these joints. And that gives you the circumferential integrity of that stand which then has been uh, mounted on a tie-shaped balloon. And these uh, threads are the mechanism of the uh, unzipping uh, during uh, the follow-up, uh, which means with the resorption of that thread, you have uh, two halves of a metal structures which are not uh, um, linked permanently and could be due uh, that uh, growth of that uh, standard vessel may appear or that you can redilate it over the technical limitation of the stand structure and the stand uh, construction itself. <coughs> So the treatment principle was clear, it is five French assembly with a minimal trauma for the vessel, even though using it in an infant. You can adapt it to the growth by uh, simple redilation, and you can uh, also uh, achieve subsequent secondary stand implantation, which allows dilatation up to dimension of uh, theoretical of adult age size. And we first performed animal study with uh, 17 stands implanted in 11 piglets. Uh, we had five weeks old piglets with a uh, approximately six kilogram body weight and had a 14 to 18 weeks later uh, uh, redo, which, uh, which has a body weight increase from six to 50 kilogram. And uh, then we uh, sacrificed these animals to see how it looked like. We had 11 implants in the pulmonary arteries and six in the aorta. And here you see some of those uh, examples being implanted in the aorta. Uh, within a piglet initially weighing 6.5 kilograms and after uh, uh, um, 16 weeks we had an increase up to 45 kilograms here and you can see that we easily readjust uh, to the uh, uh, diameter which has been uh, limited during the, um, the follow-up to a diameter which is harmonizing that what we could expect uh, in this situation. These are the fluoroscopies. All of these uh, uh, specimens have uh, shown an unzipped stent. Uh, we could see these two halves and in macroscopies you see here that w after redilation uh, or after 21 days post-implantation the uh, threads already has uh, reabsorbed and the halves are uh, disconnected uh, from each other. So in uh, 2002, which is an ongoing study, we started with, uh, uh, with a clinical study. In the meantime, we have implanted 31. It was a prospective study, ethical approved, uh, with informed, informed consent basis. The uh, medium, median age was 1.3, median weight 7.5 kilometers. She's were 4 to 5 uh, French, and the initial diameter of the balloon was 6 millimeters. And the locations here you see mainly in the correctation, one in the transverse arch, subclavian artery, pulmonary arteries in seven times, systemic veins two, pulmonary veins in one, and uh, the gradients uh, have been, uh, could be uh, reduced significantly to a non-significant uh, status. Two patients died uh, uh, due to non-related uh, causes, uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome with systemic ventricular failure, and two patients could not be successfully treated, which means the, the, that we have to transfer these patients to surgery. 
And now I will show you some examples. This is a native coarctation patient weighing five, four kilograms, five French cheese, a cross stand, 13 millimeter in length. That is uh, the placement of the stand and the result after the, infl uh, the inflation. This is another uh, example of an extended native coarctation. The parents denied surgery. The patient is weighing 3.8 kilograms. We used the five French cheese, again a 13 millimeter impl implant. And that is something what I want to mention here the compliance of the balloon is very high. That means you can inflate the stent and you can place the stent, but you cannot expect that you uh, achieve a significant uh, uh, um, uh, expansion of that due to the compliance of the balloon. That means that you afterwards need sometimes to redilate with a high pressure balloon uh, to achieve the maximum diameter what you want to have. And uh, that is something uh, what is easily achieve, uh, to achieve uh, using a second balloon doing that. That is the initial uh, anatomical substrate and the uh, result after implementation of this stent, uh, as you can see here. Another um, uh, very interesting, interesting case with a uh, transverse arch hypoplasia. Also here we implanted that stent and you see that even after stent implantation we have this significant uh, stenosis within the middle of the part of the stent and applying a, a high pressure balloon could achieve a final result without any gradient and a very nice anatomical uh, result in this situation. But uh, how does it uh, look like during a typical clinical follow-up? And this is a, 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 a situation five years a post growth stand in, uh, implantation, and we have one time redilatation in this situation, but there is a significant uh, uh, misadjustment at that uh, uh, part due to a uh, missing growth here, and uh, therefore the concept is to implant a second stent to overcome this uh, stenosis. And in this situation, we used a mega LD of, uh, f uh, from on a 12 millimeter balloon five years after growth stent implantation and could achieve a nice anatomical result in uh, this uh, patient as well. And <clears throat> another uh, uh, situation here, eight months after growth stent implantation, the same uh, implantation of a mega LD uh, from AV3 from 25 millimeter mercury prior to stent implantation of the mega LD into a assembly of a growth stent, uh, 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 prior uh, implanted growth stent, we could achieve a nice clinical and anatomical result without any residual gradient. Some of those showed a slight uh, dissection or aneurysm formation, as you can see here. This is uh, 33 months after growth and implantation in, in a patient then weighing 15 kilograms. But uh, due to the concept of that uh, treatment, you can unzip the, the, uh, the uh, growth stand and you could cover this with a covered NUMED CP stand as a second uh, uh, implantation and a second approach, which bears uh, the uh, uh, potential to get it up, uh, dilated up to adult size, uh, size uh, situation. One of these uh, growth stands in this uh, very extreme situation gives you the, uh, the nice potential of this concept. This is a extreme pulmonary, uh, left pulmonary hyperplasia in an infant after surgery, after correcting of a, uh, a fellow uh, patient with uh, small developed uh, left pulmonary arteries, and there is a a nearly subatretic uh, part of, uh, in the left pulmonary artery, uh, which is a stenosis, and uh, as you can see here, only a minimal residual flow to the left pulmonary artery, weighing 4.2 kilograms in the age of three months. And uh, the implantation of the stent uh, here, you see the positioning. This is inflation of the stent. And uh, afterwards, this was a very long-lasting procedure. And as you can see here, due to the long uh, t uh, time it needed to place the stand in that position, we had multiple thrombus formation and uh, th uh, thrombotic events in the left pulmonary lung. That means we had to s uh, subsequent use a thrombolyzer, which has been very successful, and we could achieve a total perfusion of the whole uh, left pulmonary, uh, of the left uh, pulmonary artery and the left lung. Three months post uh, implantation, we did a redo in, uh, because of a uh, in, uh, intima uh, um, uh, formation uh, uh, in the in the implanted stand, and as you can see here, with a in, uh, ballooning up to six millimeter, you can see that we could uh, successfully unzip 
uh, well, I do not know what they, it is uh, recognizable. It is unzipped, uh, the stand, you see those two halves dancing in the left pulmonary artery. And six months after we had to uh, uh, readjust it with a second stand, and that is uh, the uh, pulmonary vascular system after these six months treatment, which is uh, nicely developed and uh, perfused afterwards uh, with a second uh, crow stand implanted here. The same patient, eight years after this uh, uh, second crow stand implantation in the initially in, in, in implanted uh, uh, anatomical region, shows for sure a, uh, a re-stenosis, and uh, uh, we could implant a EV3 mega LD stand without any problem here, and uh, therefore at the very end we could achieve from a subatretic hypoplastic left pulmonary artery vascular system, a nicely developed uh, left pulmonary artery vascular system, which uh, gives uh, the left lung a real future. So in the midterm follow-up nowadays, uh, comprising uh, seven, uh, 27 patients with up uh, of a maximum to 12 years, the body weight increase mean uh, is uh, plus 96%. We have so far no surgery needed uh, for any of these patients and 21 had successful redilatations uh, in 15 patients, and planned secondary stand implantations have uh, uh, been done in 12 patients with a mean follow-up of uh, 2.6 years uh, with a maximum of six years, and so far uh, no further treatment in five uh, patients had been required. So let me conclude. Uh, the um, Crow's adjustable stand concept offers for sure the possibility for transcatheter stand treatment in early infancy. The re which obviously will, will uh, come, which obviously will happen, can be overstanded with a large stand without any restriction caused by the growth stand, which gives you the opportunity to uh, the redilate this situation up to an adult age uh, size. But um, unfortunately, the growth stand is currently no more available, which is uh, uh, very bad information since the CE marking was judged too expensive and the potential market too small. The, the company will not produce that anymore. But uh, to our knowledge, uh, the, the stand concept, the growth stand concept has been proven right. And that is, gives us the hope uh, that the upcoming growth adjustable stands like the B growth stand or the uh, Osipka baby stand will uh, work hopefully as excellent as the growth stand did in the past and therefore I think growth adjustable stands may serve as a lifelong stand platform. Thank you very much for, the, for your attention. <laughs>